here. It's good to see a nice crowd. Um, it's a busy time of year with sports and activities and uh, church night for some of our family members, but it's really good to see such a nice crowd. We want to be able tonight to provide our school community information on our commitment to providing safe and secure schools for our students and our staff members. In light of recent school safety concerns across our nation, we want to partner with you to make our students feel safe each and every day they walk into our building. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. I am extremely grateful for the partnership that Covington City Schools have with the City of Covington City Council, the City Manager Richard Douglas, and the City of Covington workers who come and help us when we have a need the City Police Department, the Virginia State Police, the Allegheny Sheriff Department, the first responders in our community's volunteer fire departments and rescue squads, the Allegheny Highlands Community Services Agency providers and other public agencies throughout our community. So I'd like to start with introductions tonight of those people that are going to assist me with some presentations and uh, if they would just stand up and, and start over there and state their name, I'd be extremely grateful. My name is Sergeant Kyle Moore, Virginia State Police. Senior Trooper Stephen Allman, Virginia State Police. Anthony Morton, Covington Division of Police. J.B. Burfman, Covington Division of Police. SRO, here, Judy Watson, H1. Rob Bennett, Principal Judy Watson. Cindy Morgan, Principal at Edgemont. Derek Cantrell, Principal at Covenant High School. Chris Jones, Assistant Principal at Covenant High School. So thank you. And we may have one more individual, School Resource Officer, which Brown may join us. Oh, he's sick, so he won't be able to join us tonight. So I do appreciate all these people that have come tonight to assist in our conversation. And we will uh, do some presentations. We will have a question and answer period. And what I'd like to propose with our question and answer period is I'm going to ask Mrs. Morgan to pass around a basket of <coughs> index cards and some pens. And if you have a question that you would like answered during the question and answer period, if you would put this on the card, and towards the end of tonight's meeting, I will gather those cards and we will read and answer those questions for you. If we're unable to answer the question tonight, we will take your name and we will answer that question at a later time. I believe we can answer every question, but I don't want to say that we, we can answer every question tonight. So Mrs. Morgan's going to come around and give you a card and a pen if you'd like to write down some questions as we go through tonight's presentation. Tonight, I'm going to give some broad comments regarding school safety, security, and prevention activities in Covington City Public Schools. Chief Morgan will give some thoughts on school safety and safety efforts uh, in our schools and in our community. We're so glad he's joined our community. Then our building principals and SROs will discuss specific topics regarding safety and prevention in their buildings. Our state troopers who are with us tonight will, will do some uh, talking about what they feel are, are important to discuss. And Tiffany Bowser, Prevention Specialist from Allegheny Highlands Community Services, will discuss their agency's commitment to the schools in prevention activities and support services that are available to our students and families. So I'd like to start by talking about some of the prevention activities that we are doing in our school to make our students feel safe and secure. We in Covington City Schools are keenly aware that our students must feel that their school environment and school culture is positive and they are supported by the adults in their schools. We want them to be able to feel comfortable to inform the adults in their buildings if they have a concern or need to report a concerning incident. So here are some of the things we are currently doing in Covington City Public Schools. It's not all of them, it's just some of the major ones. We partner with Family Preservation Services who have an office at the old 7-Eleven building in Covington for a service called Therapeutic Day Treatment. There are some students in our school who need additional support 
to maneuver to the bed. We've also asked that agency to help find more mental health services for us. And they have been working with their bosses, and they have been working with the agencies in Virginia who license mental health counselors, and they have found a mental health counselor to be in our school division each and every day, all three schools, five days a week. But that person has not been licensed yet and cannot start serving our students. But that person will be providing additional prevention services to our youth during the school days, five days a week. Uh, we hope that this will begin prior to the end of our school year. We also have a partner with the prevention service providers and mental health providers at Elegheny Highlands Community Services. Tiffany Bowser, who will speak later tonight, recently spoke to our Special Education Advisory Council about local services for prevention, and she will speak tonight on something called a Healthy Youth Coalition in our community. Responsive Classroom is another program being implemented in the K-5 uh, school, elementary school, and Judah Watson Intermediate School to improve the school culture. It uses common language to provide students social-emotional learning experiences and support. And I hope Mrs. Morgan will speak a little bit about responsive classroom and perhaps Mr. Bennett as well. We also use a program called Positive Behavior Intervention Supports. That's a program that, that provides students the feeling that they are supported and they have made efforts to be good school students. Uh, both CHS and Gita Watson have programs uh, that provide students rewards or accolades or recognition for their efforts to make them feel more connected to their school. We have school counselors in all of our schools who are available for our students for support throughout the school day. We have school nurses in all of our buildings who are able to provide support, support each and every day. And we have something called threat assessment teams in all three schools. Covington City Public Schools adopted the UVA Department of Criminal Justice model for the evaluations of threat assessments. These are done when there are incidents that need require more scrutiny than just a simple student who won't listen to the teacher. Each school in Covington City has a threat assessment team. Threat assessment teams are trained uh, and we just are undergoing some new training for our administrative staff and our school resource officers. This has been ongoing for many years and we feel that it is a vital component of how we recognize that some of the incidents that could happen need to have more scrutiny. There are also safety and security measures in our schools that we feel are very, very important and we feel blessed that Covington City Schools has them. With the support of the City of Covington and the City uh, Council, Covington and the Police Department, we have school resource officers in our three buildings each school day, all day long. These are trained school resource officers who monitor the interior and the exterior of each building at all times. The Covington City Police have increased the police monitoring and the regular walkthroughs at all three schools so our, school, our students and our staffs visibly see the support of the police. The state police also are entering our building on a regular basis and we appreciate that. Very soon, the city and state police will, and their patrol cars, cars will have cars that allow them uh, easy access to our building. Uh, we feel that that's important that they have that support. We have cameras in all buildings which are monitored regularly by the school resource officers, the principals, the state police, and the local city police department have access to our cameras. We are exploring the possibility of laptops or cell phones where the police can access from outside the building or their patrol cars what's happening inside the building through our camera system. As you know, if you have a, a student in our school division, we have locked entries with access to the buildings monitored at all times during the school day. We have received from the state of Virginia since 2014 
School safety grants, which have provided updates to our schools, uh, in the amount of $163,952. They were upgrades to the CHS uh, door entry system and to the camera system here at Gia Watson. And we hope that those school security grants, safety grants, will continue to be given to our school division and other school divisions in the state of Virginia. We recently installed phones in all classrooms in all of our schools so that teachers can contact administration or call 911 in any emergency situation. Each classroom has a phone. We have regular practice for fire drills, lockdowns, tornadoes and earthquake drills, and evacuations. These are required by the state code. But Covington City Public Schools feel strongly that we need to practice more than the number just required by the state. And we do exceed the number required regularly. Each drill is analyzed after completion to ensure best practices and provide suggestions for any areas that need improvement. And the police department are here when we have those uh, lockdowns, evacuations. They're here when we have fire drills. We are timing, we are monitoring, we are trying to implement best practices, then go back and talk to the staff about what we could do differently. Each school also has a crisis management plan, which is annually reviewed and revised. It's required to be presented to the school board in August, and it's reviewed with staff at the beginning of each school year and regularly throughout the school year. There's also school and safety teams in each building that review these crisis management plans. Crisis management plans are not released for public knowledge. We have to keep our practices available to just our staff. But local law enforcement agencies do have access to our crisis management plans. So those are just some of the broad things that I'd like you all to be aware of. There's many more that could be outlined, but I feel that they are the most important ones. 